Well, hello folks and welcome to Heartvang for Death or Dishonor. I've been given a press copy, of course, that's why I'm able to show this a little bit early. But, I feel, uh, I've been so excited about this, because I was in the uh, multiplayer game, the stream, uh, during the Paradox Con uh, event, and I played as the Bohemian Empire, that is, fascist Czechoslovakia. I will, of course, be playing some other uh, campaigns simultaneously. Uh, there's another one that's coming up very soon. I think this one's going to be published first, and then you'll know the other one. Uh, maybe like half an hour afterwards or something of the sort. But, um, yeah, I, I feel like this is the most important one. we really got to do this. We've got to spread our bohemian beer all over the world. I, sh I should have done so many jokes about uh, my bohemian empire in India. And how the fact, you know, we had um, taken Indian pale ale or, or something of the sort. I don't know. And we made beer great again in Sweden at the end of the game. So that, that was quite a lot of fun. So let's get started. Iron Man, of course, uh, and historical AI focuses so that we can predict what Germany is going to do. I'm actually just sitting here restarting the game several times because I've noticed that Iron Man is turned off for some reason. But I guess it's because it's a press build. Normally it works. Uh, normally we can get achievements, but uh, oh well. I'm still gonna do Iron Man so that I don't have access to the console, of course. And uh, we'll get started. Oh my, I just noticed I almost clicked the wrong country there for a second. Whoops. Okay, so Death and Dishonor, basically the expansion pack that focuses on the uh, region south of Czechoslovakia or south of Germany and Poland here. Uh, Poland already has its special focus tree, so it's it's the block that's stuck between the Soviet Union and Germany. And Czechoslovakia starts off in quite an interesting situation. We have a divided nation, with uh, so we have lower national unity, but we have uh, Skoda Works, which gives us factory output plus 10%, and we have this amazing tree here. So basically, fortifications make us as a country just absolutely insane. Uh, we can, if we went democratic, we could actually potentially withstand the might of Germany uh, due to amazing fortresses. Uh, and Industrial Legacy also gives us a lot of bonuses, but we know what's gonna happen to us. We know that Germany, doing with their historical foci, are gonna want the Sudetenland. And we do not want to give the Sudetenland. And we want to be German partners. So, we've got to really rush this and we've got to play this well. We've got to go right and do uh, uh, Czech fascism. Here's the thing, during my, um, during the uh, uh, stream for Paradox Con, I went for Czech consolidation and that actually gave me a civil war, I think. Uh, basically, the Slovaks weren't too happy, so I think we're going to go for national uh, fascism, which is you know, half the power, but it's better because then we won't actually have to go through a civil war that will destroy our armies as it did during the stream. Uh, and then, otherwise, uh, well, hmm, of course we're not going to go for German appeasement, or at least we're not going to deliver the Sudetenland. Uh, hopefully this can be skipped after we become friends with Germany so that we can actually get German technology. I've got to say, Hearts Martin 4 isn't, you know, the most amazing game ever, but, uh, or like in general, but I really like the art and just how certain countries, uh, and over time also, uh, you can see like specific equipment that the countries used. Um, like this, the Swedes have their own things as well, I think, certain tanks. Uh, actually, in fact, if we go to our tech tree, we can actually see uh, some Czech tanks, I think? Yes, indeed. Also, I'm really sorry if I keep. I'm really sorry if I keep saying Czech, but it's I mean I mean Czechoslovak, of course, because that's who we're playing. Soon, we're just gonna be referring to it as Bohemia, though. Okay, so here's something I noticed just before we start off everything. It looks like a German ally actually makes us into a puppet uh, or a German satellite. That's not really nice. A uh, German partner, however, does get us in the axis potentially. So that's a much safer bet, but then we'd probably have to go through a civil war, which is less fun. Alright, let's get this going. We've got our basic te technology set up. 
we have um, our political direction set up and uh, yeah we're just gonna rush fascism and try to become the Bohemian Empire as soon as possible there's actually a new air map mode in the game that I I'm not sure I totally understood I'll to I'll get the hang of it soon enough but it's just uh, a little bit like I of course the old system was terrible right it was really hard to understand what was going on here you can at least see you know you move your units around and you can see where they're going uh, but it's still a little bit confusing the remote salarization of the Rhineland we all know this one uh, political direction okay so uh, strategic decisions also give us political power which could be useful but we're gonna go right trying to appease the uh, the Germans and then we'll go for strategic decisions or something of the sort industrial legacy and all of this would be really nice to get but again we're trying to rush the political side of things here and immediately we're gonna get a fascist demagogue okay so the fascists need 35 percent for us to support Czech fascism and that at this rate should take us 10 days 50 50 days no, sorry, 100 days, right? Uh, no, a little bit more, 120 or something of the sort. So, we're going to go for strategic decisions in the meantime. Civil War for Fascism. While the attempts of the fascist movement to revitalize the people's pride in their nation have seen some successes, the resistance against these ideas remains high. The generals plotting to overthrow the current administration are disappointed in the lack of confidence uh, the Czechoslovakian population themselves seem to have in the Czechoslovakian superiority. They remain certain that the people will eventually tire of Edvard Benes. I'm sorry if I mispronounce his name completely there, but um, lies, but are divided in what course of action to take. Some call for a coup to be executed now before the Czechoslovakian enemies take advantage of its weaknesses. I'm paraphrasing right there, but uh, however, doing so while public support is limited would plunge the nation into civil war. Greatness, greatness can scarcely be achieved without spilling blood, but the blood of our countrymen, even traitors to the cause, is precious. Uh, so the Democratic could start a civil war, and civil wars, you know, we just want to completely avoid that. After all, the fascists only have. 20 or 30 percent right now which is nothing so we are going to say they must unite the people first then rule them we're also going to go from a volunteer only to limited conscription and hopefully start fielding some manpower because um, right now zero is very bad for us Italy took one state actually I see that 10 divisions is a bit much here for our manpower pool, so we're gonna go for five instead. Seems like the democratic forces really want to have a civil war, but uh, yeah, no, we're not gonna do that. Fascist sympathies in the military. Se several high ranking members of the Czechoslovakian military have expressed support, some privately and some openly, for the fascist movement in Czechoslovakia. They feel that the CSNS has forgotten how important discipline and patriotism is to keeping the country together, and are increasingly annoyed by the army being treated by the government as more of a tool than one of the nation's most important institutions. Some of them go as far as to suggest that a new government is needed, one that knows how to lead Czechoslovakia w with strength and tradition into the next half of the century. This faction may not predominantly be politicians, but some of them have gained positions in the Department of Defense. In these developments, uh, or if the, these developments continue, they may have some sufficient, uh, or may have sufficient political support to execute a coup. If public support is sufficient, a coup can be executed. Good. Also, I don't know if you've seen this before, but the new trade screen is amazing. Um, it's very nice. Now, what was it I was trading? Right, it was steel that I'm importing from Germany. I'm importing eight, and then there would be a deficit of one. Yeah, whatever. The I know it's not super efficient, but I'll do that anyway. So the fascists are at 31%, and now only gaining 0.03. Uh, so getting to 35 is gonna take maybe another 70 days perfect for another batch of, uh, of foci uh, I think 
I mean, these these are really powerful, right? Because land forward construction speed, and then this also gives us. Oh wait, I think they changed it. Oh right, down here it's the recruitable population. Oh wait, no, yeah, it changes right on top here already. Gives us 0.03 for every one of these. Okay, it's actually pretty insane. Um, but I think we're gonna go for the industrial side of things right now. Also, I think it was in this uh, latest patch or expansion that the Prince of Terror people now actually get a non-core manpower plus 2% modifier, which is great. So basically, if you're playing as Luxembourg or Bataan, you don't have to really worry that much about manpower anymore. Or you do, but you know, it's still like, if you conquer China as Luxembourg, you won't have to worry that much if you have that guy. Uh, on that and we're gonna go for a military theorist though because I always like that early army experience and it's also daily it's oh, very nice the 11th Olympiad games the games are concluded wonderful also I have to say these sprites are very nice like the Czechoslovak sprites I think they're included in um, the DLC I'm not sure and so begins the Spanish Civil War. Unfortunately, we can't really do much about it because we're non-aligned. Or actually, no, we're democratic, so... Uh, if we did send volunteers... Yeah, it needs to be at 50%. We actually have a focus, though, that gives us... Uh, foreign expeditions, divisions required for sending volunteer force, minus 50%. I don't know if that's a 50% total, so basically we can send whenever we want, or if it's minus 50% so that it falls down to a total of 25%. I think it's the uh, the former one. I feel like Sweden should also have that, and a lot of democratic countries, they should have a special division thing. Uh, after all, I know at least Sweden sent a lot of people down to Spain to fight in the Civil War. Okay, so normally I'd like to do foci back-to-back, -back, but we're actually at 33.6 ah, actually no we're gonna do one more and I think we're actually gonna go for ooh adds one civilian factories production efficiency growth and then there's the Czech industry all these are mutually exclusive so basically Czech industry will give us two civilian factories in Bohemia one civilian factory in Moravia but this one is a little bit less powerful and but down here we actually get the united population uh, thing which will remove the divided nation uh, I mean it's hmm interesting anyway I think we're gonna go for something completely different we're gonna go for fortifications because of the recruitable population and also plus 30% uh, construction speed for forts that's crazy uh, I was gonna wait with using political power because once we do become fascist, it's nice to go to uh, war economy or at least mobili mobilized economy, but we're gonna go free trade, uh, mostly because of the research time and factory output, which is very nice. Oh wow, that was great timing. Just as my focus finished, I was like, okay, time to go for the, uh, what's the focus called? There's. Um, Yes, check fascism. Um, but no, apparently there's a fascist coup d'etat. Some will say they saw it coming. Both those who warned against it, or against the dangers of fascism, and those who exalted it as the savior of Czechoslovakia have found their prophecies made reality today as the military in Bohemia overthrew the CSNS-led government and seized power. Edvard Benes is missing, rumored to have gone into exile, and the coup has been met with little initial resistance. The new Czechoslovakian leadership has no plans to allow resistance to grow either. Martial law has been declared, and with the uh, changes that are underway, whatever comes after is unlikely to be very different. Politics will change, fascists will become the ruling power, public elections will not be held, reign of terror with political power gain plus 10% for 730 days. Wonderful. Now. Look at that flag. Look at that flag. And hopefully I pronounced this correctly. Probably not. Do let me know how to pronounce it in the comments below. Yaroslav Krejic. Krejic? I, I have no idea how to 
what is that? A C with a inverted hat and then an I. I don't know if that's an I. I is that pronounced an S and S? I don't know. Please let me know. I, I'd really appreciate it. But yes, we are the Bohemian Empire. Look at that. Oh, we're going to make beer great again. Okay, so I'm looking at the tree here, right? German partner. That's the one we're trying to go for. But German ally and German puppet. Like, what's the difference? So, basically, uh, we become a puppet. But over here... Um, you also become a puppet, right? We'll cancel effect. Become German satellite. Okay, so maybe like a, a not so strong puppet. Over here, it's like a strong puppet. Here's a weaker puppet, maybe? I don't know. I'll have to check. See what I did there? Check. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's so stupid. Also, a correction from before. It says divisions required for sending volunteers force minus 50%. It's not the world tension, okay? So right now, basically, we have a tension which requires us to have uh, 30 divisions. Um, and we have 27. But if we had that focus, we would only need 15. Anyway, we need to go and do this. Support for fascism is, is growing nationwide, and as more power falls into fascist hands, more pressure can be applied to the centers who resist. Germany will accept us into the Axis. Perfect. The German Reich has accepted our request to join their faction. We stand together. Actually, we joined before anyone else. Look at that. Wonderful. We, I feel safe now. Alright, so let's actually send some divisions down to Spain. We can only send two, and uh, we're going to send a, a beer tasting expedition. We're going to call them the I-Beer Tasters. Oh my god, the puns, they're they are getting strong in me. Yes. Uh, what is it? There. Uh, and click, and go. Okay, so I have really both good and bad experiences of sending divisions down to Spain. Uh, we're going to try to be careful this time, because last time it went terribly. Uh, but yes, we're going to claim all the victory for ourselves, uh, and we're going to try the beer in Bilbao. Unfortunately, there are some Republican forces down there, some uh, socialists and communists. No, uh, George Orwell was probably f fighting there, although I think he was actually stationed in Barcelona. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, we're going to taste the beer down there, or up here, rather. And behold... The beer here was okay, but we we made it a little bit better. Uh, now I think we want to go to Barcelona. Seems like a nice place. Or maybe Valencia. You can actually hear my computer scream. It's just so... All the beer, all the heat down in the Iberian Peninsula, you know. The Iberian... Oh my god, I, I need to stop. Stop me, please. Oh, Czech, Czech fascism has finished. Um... What should we do now? Okay, so this one we actually have to wait until it's at 50%. So that's a little bit off the road or down the road. Um, German appeasement, don't really care too much about that. We are already friends with the Germans. I feel like we should do... Ah, it's these two that... Uh, I don't know. Because divided nation is actually pr a pretty bad thing there. Uh, with the recruitable population and the consumer factories, like the national union, I, I don't care about because we're not going to lose Bohemia, right? Um, it's just a matter of the rest. So I might, in fact, hmm, yeah, you know what? Let's do, let's do um, Czechoslovak industry. So here's the annoying world tension thing, right? Where I never know if I should wait or not, but I think we're gonna go for partial mobilization in the meantime, just so that we, uh, minus 30 is a pretty big hit. Actually, wait, wait a second. Uh, there's no one, there's no better one, right? No, yeah, it's partial. We're also gonna go for a very early mechanized um, push here. Uh, I normally wait quite a bit with that, but I don't see why we shouldn't do it. I, I should start doing Mass Assault Doctrine as well. Or, yeah, that's the thing. 
I normally, yeah, mass, mass assault is always the best. Uh, but let's go for the mechanized mobile infantry first. We're actually doing a pretty good job here for the, the Spanish. Uh, it's quite incredible what you can do with a few units to help out the AI. The Hindenburg disaster. Okay, so this one uh, actually happened. Sometimes, you know, the events go either way just for fun because they don't actually affect history that much in uh, Hearts of Iron 4. What I, I love about micromanaging in the Civil War like this is that basically uh, if you do a very good defense apparently, right? If your units are good, or no, I don't know what's happening here, but basically the Spanish attack, I survive pretty well and then I can do a rapid counter attack because they have no defensive lines, right? They're using their, their spread very thin. Amelia Earhart disappears, a loss for aviation. Leadership purges in the Soviet Union, evidence of the corrupt in or corruption inherent in communism. Um, so, what next? I think we should, oh, are we at 50? No, we're still not at 50. So we're just gonna go for Czechoslovak industry again, I think. I mean, it doesn't hurt. Division recovery rate plus 12%? Yes, please. Yeah, I know we're gonna have an amazing industry, so we're normally I'd go for superior firepower, but I've been convinced that mass assault is actually amazing. So, um, we'll do that. I mean, it's just su it's superior in every way. The Marco Polo Bridge incident. I just noticed we're already in September 37. Uh, the first episode is always, you know, much... I, I, we always do a lot more because the game hasn't bogged down yet. We can finally do United Population. A number of recent political initiatives combined with our policy of balanced industrial growth has led the Czechs and the Slovaks nationwide feeling much more... Oh, and Slovaks nationwide feeling much more united in purpose. Yeah, okay, I probably read that right. It's getting a, li a little bit late in the day. We are going to lead the push into Barcelona, taste their beer, and uh, hopefully the war will be over by then. Oh, something's happening down here. Ah, Soviet troops. We're now actually going to go into extensive conscription. That gives us 465,000 manpower, and we can finally start training a proper army here. Alright, there we go. Um, Barcelona has fallen. United population completed at the same time. Wonderful. Uh, so now we can actually do aggressive wars and push on into the Hungarian situation and the Polish question. We're gonna... actually no, I think we'll start those in the next episode so I can do some research about the foci and so on and so forth. And in the meantime, I'll leave you uh, with this one. We've done two years, actually, yeah, two years uh, of gameplay here. Uh, so quite a bit has happened. The Bohemian Empire stands on the verge of conquests and our army here has actually been training for quite a while so these are all regular troops about to become... Oh, they haven't pro progressed at all. Damn. Anyway, as I was saying, thank you so much for watching. This has been Game Gapster. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Farewell.